So what was the inspiration around starting your business? I became a teacher and I just saw a need for girls who couldn't afford gowns to be able to afford them right. or for the parents to be able to actually go to different spots to see dresses. Cause even at the bridal store, girls would come in and we're like, no, we don't have any prom dresses. And they're just so expensive that I wanted to create a company where mm -hmm. I could come to the moms and I was also affordable. What is the first step if I have an idea for a business? To plan it out. And then once you have a name, you can go to sunbiz.org and sign up for an LLC. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I wouldn't even do that. I wouldn't do that until you are 100% ready. Because once you sign up as an LLC, then you're like put under all these tax restrictions and all these emails about all this law, like laws. And I'm a person that needs my hand held through figuring things out. And they don't do that. I mean, it's the government. They're not gonna, they're not gonna hold your hand. So I think my, my first tip is if you have an idea, plan that stuff out to a T. You don't need a business plan in the sense of everybody wants you to have like this really perfect plan, but like write it out, make sure you got it, know your brand, know your target audience, see if it's profitable, and then get your LLC. Mm -hmm. Should you look for an investment to start your business or should you use your own money? Use your own money, absolutely. Because once you, I don't know, I mean, for me, I, I could, and my biggest investment was my dad. <laughs> he gave me some money, which was awesome. He gave me a thousand dollars to buy the gowns. Oh. Um, I know, right? That was that was huge. That was such a big deal. And I didn't think he would. My parents went through a divorce and all of that, but he was always very supportive of like entrepreneurial kind of business mindset. So, without that, I would have been a much slower process. But even so, at the end of the day, all these gowns I have in my home are mine, which is a big deal. But I do want to share a book. So I went to Barnes and Nobles and looked at crazy at all their stuff. But The Crowd Sorceress, oh. that book is life because she talks about, so get smart, get funded, and kickstart your next big idea. So it's a lot about kickstart and GoFundMe and everything and teaching you how to ask for money and how to actually make it. If you could only pick one professional service, like an accountant slash bookkeeper, a lawyer, or a trusted banker, which would you choose? Probably a bookkeeper because I don't have one yet. And, and all that terrifies me. There's so many things that you have to keep on track of, and I don't even know how, where to start. What, what um, processes are most important to automate? Um, for me, it was organization, because my one intern, she organizes all of my dresses for me, and I am a big old jerk, and I, when I come back from like a photo shoot or an appointment or anything, I just throw them back wherever, and that's, and that, that's not right. <laughs> so really organization and also that your um your sales that's such a big deal that's why i'm gonna go to shopify because i'm i have no idea how much money i made i have i, mm, I know this year it's like 0, 0.00 because i've been there's a lot happening this year so that was tough for me but last year i feel like i probably made a couple hundred dollars maybe maybe five or six hundred dollars and i don't even know like i couldn't even tell you if i made that money or not like i think i did but so getting your sales together and organization of your inventory, whatever that may be, is that's what you need in life. Are there any local Florida small business organizations you recommend for someone to join? My answer is <laughs> to go to any networking event you can that works with your brand. Okay, perfect. So yes, okay. what is the best marketing tool for a business in Florida? Facebook and Instagram all day, every day as much as you can <laughs> like that's I mean that's honestly that's the basis of it because Florida is such a we're such a big state and so is every other state in the world but honestly as long as you connect with especially with Instagram if you're looking for like a younger crowd you go to Instagram if you're looking for a little bit older mature crowd you definitely hit up Facebook and if you do both then there you go you're bridging that gap so should there be a plan B if the current business model becomes unsuccessful Oh my God. Yes. Yes. As much as I'm about diving into things and going full force. Absolutely. That's why I'm going to hair school. That's why I, I'm getting the different things I need to have my teacher certificate complete. Like at the end of the day, as much as I love being a dreamer and a, and a go-getter, you gotta be realistic. And so, yes, of course, absolutely. I would have a fallback no matter what. So if you have had a business for say like one year, should mm -hmm. you stay in it or should you quit after not making money? Oh my God, how dare you quit? No, yes, stay in it. Keep going. There's, 
if you have a passion for it and if you think it can actually work, then go for it. What is one piece of advice that you wish you had received before starting your business? <sighs> That's a good question. It's one piece of advice. That it's going to be lonely. Mm -hmm. Being, yeah, being an entrepreneur, especially a solopreneur, which I'm sure you are too, it's real lonely. There were times that like, I mean, before I had interns, mannequins myself and, and prepping the clothes and like make them talk to each other. Like that sounds weird, but like at some point you have to communicate with something and like, and communicating through Instagram kind of worked, but people had a job. It was like summer. So I of course had it off as a teacher, but other people were working and couldn't answer polls or answer questions or talk to me. So it can get real lonely and you need to find a group of people quick to make you feel like you're not crazy and you're not just doing this all by yourself in this big old world. What lesson have you learned recently in your business that you would like to share? That it is all on you. It's, it's kind of like tough love. Like you, if I don't show up, I'm not making any money. And as fun it is, as it is to be like a boss babe and hashtag boss babe and girl boss it, it is on you. And if this was like a legit, if this was my only job, I would be failing right now because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to pay my bills. Cause it's just, right. I'm going through a lot like my mom has cancer and then I went kind of like through a breakup and it's like, I'm transitioning careers. Like there's so much happening that I put wanting wardrobe on the back burner. And as much as like, it is what it is. Like I needed to do it. It also hurt a lot. Cause now I'm, I almost feel like I'm starting from scratch again. Like I'm re, booting everything and so that it is all on you but yeah it's all on you and you have to keep it up and you're allowed to, to take a step back every once in a while maybe like a weekend but you gotta get back on that horse and keep going because if not you're gonna be restarting from from square one which sucks you what advice do you have for business owners who have reached the plateau in their growth go to different like reach out to different parties reach out to different networking events like for me i've gone to i've gone to all kinds i've gone to ones that are um essentially for african-american women or essentially for asian-american women like mm -hmm. and obviously i'm not either of those things and it definitely like kind of breaks a certain cycle and it gets you out of your comfort zone and it gets you to a whole new world that it's not like jasmine aladdin a whole new world <laughs> <laughs> but it, i haven't seen it yet did you watch it no i was talking about the old one i forgot the new one came out is it still yes. in yeah it just came out yesterday or two, oh. Two oh i have to go see it I know me too, but, um, but yeah, so, cause it definitely like breaks stereotypes, it breaks boundaries. And mm -hmm. so if you are plateauing your business, definitely reach out to a different community in your community. Cause as long as you step out and just are kind and nice, you'll, you'll get more business and different perspectives and different cultures. And it's so exciting. So, so that's what I would say. If you plateau in a business, reach out to things that scare you and things that are uncomfortable or things you don't know or just like straight up like, I have no idea. I'm going to go to this event. We'll see what happens and literally see what happens and see where it takes you. So do right. you have anything else that you would like to add or say about your business to kind of promote yourself? Um, Wandering Wardrobe, Tampa, Florida. Hit your girl up for a dress. <laughs>